Okay, yes, it has started. Wonderful. Okay, let us pray and we will begin. Uh, Aren, could you please lead us in prayer today? Sure, first of all. Sure. Let me pray. pray. Lord Father, we just want to say thank you for this all for pessimism and the week. Lord Father, the learning word, Lord Father. Uh, Lord Father, as we type in, in your word to uh, Lord, Father, I pray for each and every one of us, Lord Father, that prepare our heart. Lord Father, in Lord Father, I pray for us, Nancy, Lord Father, keep her wisdom and knowledge, Lord Father, as, he, as she reaches uh, your word, Lord Father. And Lord Father, I, uh, Lord Father, I pray for uh, all the uh, students uh, and first names in the name of Jesus, most precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Aren, for uh, committing this time to God in prayer. Uh, we will continue from where we had stopped in the last class. So we saw John chapter 8, you know, wonderful, wonderful passage where Jesus uh, makes so many claims about himself and he reveals that, you know, he is the light of the world. He's the, uh, 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 he's the bread of life. Uh, yeah. So basically he just reveals that he has come from God, that he is sent from above and that he is the Messiah. And towards the end, you know, he uh, adds and he says that before Abraham was, I am. Okay, um, so we see the claims of Jesus. Just checking. Oh, okay, you know, bread of life is six, uh, John six, sorry. So it's not <clears throat> John eight. But yeah, he does claim that he's the light of the world. And towards the end, he claims, and he says that, uh, before Abraham was, I am. So just revealing that uh, uh, even Abraham, whom they held in high regard, uh, uh, that you know they trusted Abraham as one of those uh, men who was part of the very beginning of their faith. Now Jesus is claiming to be before Abraham. So then he's making it very clear that he is God. So his claims about himself we have seen. And so far we have seen a great conflict arising against Jesus. He's doing miraculous works. He is speaking the words of God. He's displaying the authority of God. And yet people are not ready to believe. Especially the religious leaders, the Pharisees. Even when he does good works, um, they are asking the wrong questions because uh, they are not willing to accept the obvious fact that this man is no ordinary man. He has come from God. So that's what we've seen so far. The way Jesus is doing his ministry. Okay. And um, he's giving witness to the very truth that he is the Messiah. So then we went on to John chapter 9. And in John chapter 9, what we saw is uh, there was a blind person, okay, blind from birth. And Jesus asks, like he makes some uh, uh, clay uh, with his uh, spit. And he asks that person to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Uh, this blind man does it and he receives his sight. So that's where we were at. We um, uh, saw that this was a miraculous healing because uh, he was blind from his birth. And how do you uh, try and explain? Isn't it something like a person who has never seen finally being able to see? But that happened before their eyes. And when this happened, uh, people were questioning you know, uh, and asking that, the, the Pharisees, they were uh, the ones who asked again, you know, they, they did not want to believe no matter what miraculous work Jesus did, they did not want to believe that he is the Messiah. So uh, they go and uh, ask this man, how were your eyes opened? Okay, so that is the question they're asking him because it is unusual. It is uh, something that uh, cannot happen, uh, you know, and has never happened. So they ask him, how are your eyes open? And he answers, the man answers and he says, 
a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed. I received sight. So is his explanation clear? It is very clear. He has mentioned that Jesus is the one who has healed him. Now, look at the questioning. More than being marveled at the fact that this person is healed, these um, uh, Pharisees and the people in authority, the question they're asking is, where is he? Okay, so that is more important for them. Okay, as if there is an offense. Generally, we would ask, right, where is this person? Somebody has um, stolen, somebody has, um, you know, um, uh, created some violent atmosphere. We ask, okay, where is this person so that we can imprison them, we can try them and all of that. So it seems like the leaders of the time, they are not interested in the power and the words of Jesus, but they are more interested in saving their position. So that is why uh, out of insecurity, they're asking, where is he? So this man answers and he says, I don't know where, where he is. Um, so look at what happens next. Okay, They bring him, they uh, bring him to the Pharisees. Yeah. And uh, they make an argument okay, about the fact that Jesus healed this person on which day? Sabbath. Okay, Have you heard this before? Uh, on the Sabbath when Jesus healed, they had an issue with it? Same thing. They are coming up with the same issue here and they are questioning Jesus. And um, it, it's like they are making a big deal out of the healing on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees, they are saying, verse 16, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Okay, So it's very clear that uh, they are unwilling to accept Jesus as the Messiah, no matter what he does. A blind man who could not see from his birth has been healed, but the hardness of heart, and we have talked about it. So they come up with a reason. You know, when hearts are hard, there need not be a logical answer or a logical reason for why you believe what you believe. People are willing to come up with any reason so that they can uh, justify what they believe. So they believe that this man is not from God. So they wanted to justify it. And therefore, they're coming up with all kinds of arguments. Their argument is this man is not from God because what did he do? He has healed on the Sabbath. He did not keep the Sabbath. So then, <laughs> yeah, the others, okay, they question. So the argument is that he is not from God. And that, um, you know, obviously, if he's not from God, he must be a mortal man, sinful, just like everyone else. But the crowd is divided, as we've already seen. So some people, they ask the question, okay, you're saying he's not from God, but how can a sinner do such signs okay so the work in itself is revealing the power of god and the people are unable to come to terms with it so some are saying he is messiah some are saying he's not messiah now because this blind person is being interrogated they continue to ask him questions so they ask him the question okay who do you say he is, or what do you say about him? And this man, he says he is a prophet. Why? Why did he say he is a prophet? Because Jesus said, you know, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So Jesus knew that if he did this act, he would be healed. And the blind man knew that Jesus had that sense of what is going to happen uh, if he follows Jesus' instruction. So he perceived that Jesus is a prophet. So his answer was, he didn't say he is the Messiah, but he said he is a prophet. Okay. Now, the Jews, uh, they were upset. As they are discussing, the whole group, they are not agreeing that he is not the Messiah. The conclusion they wanted was, he is a sinner uh, and uh, he needs to be punished. So that is the conclusion they wanted. 
within their group they're not coming to that conclusion there is division some people think that he's a good man so they asked the blind man okay if the blind man were also to say that you know this man is evil or this man is unrighteous they could have taken action on him but he is saying that i think he's a prophet he's a prophet so they are finding a way to get a statement against jesus so they decide that it's no use asking the blind man let's ask the parents of the blind man so they go ahead and ask the parents of the blind man is this your son who you say was born blind how then does he see now okay it's like a trick question again they want an answer against jesus what do the parents respond the parents say yes this is our son we know that he was born blind they give testimony to that but beyond that what they say is um how this happened um you know regarding that you ask him don't question us so it is likely that they were also afraid of the consequences or the results of confirming that this man jesus you know he has uh, is something different about him so they do not want to take the conversation to jesus being special so to avoid that what they have done is they put the onus back on the son itself and they say he is grown up why don't you ask him he can speak for himself okay so when this is uh, happening uh, they again call the blind man and they they kind of correct him and they say give glory give god the glory we know that this man is a sinner so they are rebuking him because he has some regard for jesus he said that he is a prophet right so the uh, pharisees did not like it the jews also did not like it and they are uh, rebuking him and they telling him look the only person who deserves glory uh, or the only person who must be elevated is god why are you elevating this man we know that this man is a sinner so it was already settled in their hearts that jesus is a sinner and they wanted to prove it in any which way so the man replies okay and he says that uh, uh, look you are talking about all these things okay and you are trying to um, understand who this jesus is i don't want to get into all that okay he says look i don't know whether he is a sinner or not i don't know all those things one thing i know that i was though i was blind now i see so that is the explanation which the blind man gives now looking at what the blind man said you know we can say that even in our lives when we started our journey with god okay uh, maybe we didn't know a lot about jesus we knew that he is the messiah we were born again you know our sins we repented of our sins and uh, god did a deep work in our hearts our lives changed okay and there are testimonies from each one of our lives sometimes when we try to tell people about jesus now it's not required right to um uh, know all the scriptures and all the you know theological arguments about this christ now if we know well and good if we don't know we can still tell others what the blind man said what did he say he said look whether he is a sinner or not i don't know one thing i know though i was blind now i see so it is like giving uh, the evidence for christ for jesus being the christ through our very lives when we say you know what this is the story of my life or this is the testimony of my life once i was like this you know once i was fearful once i was uh, caught up in sin once my family was going through you know these kind of challenges and this is what the lord jesus has done for me you know it's a wonderful way of revealing christ to those who don't know him we can just share our story so simple that's what the blind man did what did he say he said look what i know i'll tell you i know about my life how it was how it is now and 
uh, that's a great way of leading people to Christ. Okay, and we must remember that. So that is how the blind man approached this whole thing. For him, the only thing mattered is his life changed. Okay, and he was ready to talk about it. Now let's move forward. Let's see what's going on. The Pharisees, the Jews, they are not ready to accept whatever is being said about Jesus because in their minds, they've already concluded, how can he be the Christ? He's a sinner. Okay, that is the conclusion. So these people question him some more to see, okay, come on, can we get some handle against Jesus? So they ask him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? So this man is getting irritated. He's saying, look, I already told you that and you did not listen. Okay, Why, why do you want to hear it again? See how he deals with the with the repeated questioning. So he asks them back this question. Do you also want to become his disciples? You know, it's like the wisdom of God. Through this one statement, he's able to stop their questioning. Okay, so I don't know how God gave him that uh, uh, sentence. He said, I already told you, but you don't believe. Do you also want to become his disciples? So obviously, the leaders were very, very offended. And they tell him, look, we are not the disciples of Jesus, but we are the disciples of Moses. So we know right, that they were so proud of being the descendants of Abraham. They were so proud of being the uh, people whom Moses led. So they had reverence for Moses. They had reverence for David. They had reverence for all these men of God. But... So they did not want to put their trust in Jesus because, you know, sometimes uh, what God is doing, it does not, the packaging, yes, the content is, is very real. Uh, it is in line with scripture. Jesus is fulfilling the prophecies of God. But the way it appears, it's not what they had in mind. You know, for example, we said that Jesus came. He was born in a lowly manger. It doesn't uh, connect to our logical mind. We feel like something is wrong. How can the Son of God be born in the manger? So it becomes hard for us to accept, but God does something in a slightly different way. So same thing is happening here to the uh, leaders. They are not able to accept right? that this Jesus is the Son of God. They were ready to accept all the other men. And they are so proudly talking about the fact that they are disciples of Moses. And they tell uh, this blind man, look, God spoke to Moses. Okay. Uh, and uh, we know that Moses was connected to God. Who, who is this man? We don't know. So, you know, don't, don't talk about this, this person called Jesus. That was their attitude. So now the blind man is amazed. It actually should be the other way around. You know, people around the blind man should be amazed that a man who was blind from birth is now able to see. But what's happening? The blind man is amazed. Why? Because he's saying, uh, <clears throat> how come you don't know where he's from? Yet, you know, this man whom you are trying to um, build a case against, he is the one who has healed me. Okay? He has healed me. And basically, see that statement says, the blind man says, why? This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. So the blind man is saying, I am amazed that you, know, you are so much against this man, and yet, who is this man? What is his um, testimony? What is his, uh, you know, life example? He's walking in the miracles of God. And that is problematic for you. I'm amazed by all of you is what he's telling them. And then he also adds and he says, look, don't you know that the God we worship, he does not hear sinners. Now there are some you know, Old Testament scriptures where we, we see that if we have iniquity in our hearts, God will not hear us. So 
in that sense the blind man whatever little knowledge he had about god he says we know that god never hears the prayers of sinners and today he was standing there able to see and who prayed over him or who ministered to him jesus and the prayer was answered so basically he's trying to say this is common common knowledge that god does not hear the prayers of sinners only if they are a worshipper of god he hears them since the world began it's like he's he's just trying to uh, understand you know why it is so hard for them he's saying look since the world began it is unheard that anyone opened the eyes of one who was blind so he's saying don't you think it is just um, uh, you know incredible that before like throughout history we have never heard anyone opening a blind person's eyes but today he is standing in front of them and that should be an amazement to the people and then he is trying to make a case and say god does not hear the prayers of sinners but jesus when he ministered today i stand as a witness something that has never happened has happened my eyes are opened then this man you know how come you all are saying that he is not from god unless he is from god he could do nothing so verse 33 the blind man says okay if this man were not from god he could do nothing so he has come to the right conclusion in his heart but the leaders of his time they are struggling the hardness of heart it is uh, an unbelieving heart which the people are carrying uh, in the face of such a mighty miracle okay now this also shows us that when god works when uh, supernatural things take place when miracles take place in people's lives you know, people are healed they are delivered we may not get a positive response from everybody you know that is our expectation isn't it we might think that yeah now the church will grow now many people will come to believe in jesus christ and this is how things are going to be but look at the response some believed but others are still questioning even though it is such a supernatural work okay uh, i don't know about you but in my lifetime i don't think i have seen anybody uh, whose eyes have been opened you no know, blind person who has seen till today i have not in in my circle i have heard testimonies but i have never seen so if that happens will i be amazed very amazed okay and that is the miracle jesus did and yet the jews the uh, people around are not willing to accept it and they are creating a trouble of a different kind so when the blind man out of his simple faith he says i don't know all these things once i was blind now i see and never in history you have heard a blind man being able to see if this man were not from god he could not do this so simple faith he has simple faith and what does simple faith do simple faith can see what god is doing so he was able to see look at these other people what they say you know they are upset they are saying that this man is a sinner and now they are blaming the blind man they are telling him you were completely born in sins and you are are you teaching us and they throw him out okay so when somebody wants to believe the lies truth can be spoken from every side can you see that from everywhere it is clear that jesus is the messiah but the jews want to believe their own lies so now when the blind man is also giving witness that he is the messiah they say okay stop talking we don't want to listen to you because they don't want to change the lies in their head and then they are accusing him you know uh, we don't know like what the background of this man is but they say you were born in sins and remember they had that concept that when people sinned they would have a 
consequence. So this man was blind because, you know, he would have sinned or um, his parents would have sinned. So that was their understanding. So they are blaming him now and they're telling, why are you talking to us? You were blind. You're a sinful person. You don't have to teach us. And he got healed. So what would he have expected? He would have expected that in the society, in the community, people are going to rejoice with him. But you see here, what did the leaders do to him? They threw him out, cast him out. That means excommunicated or removed him from the community. It would have been very painful for him. But let's see what happens. Now, Jesus, he hears that they had cast him out. So, uh, you know, being rejected, it's so painful, isn't it? And uh, in this case, we are told that from his own community, he had been shut out. How does God respond, you know, when we are rejected for acknowledging him? So what did the blind man do? He said, look, this Jesus, yeah, something different about him. So he was standing by what he knew about Jesus. For that, he paid a price. They threw him out. When Jesus heard that, you know, it says when he had found him. So it tells us that maybe he put in some effort to find this man. And then he asks him, do you believe in the son of God? Because Jesus is seeing some faith in him. Isn't it? He already stood up for Christ in front of the Jews. So now Jesus is asking him to complete that. Jesus is asking him the question, do you believe in the Son of God? He answered him, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? You look here. There is a little bit of faith which the blind man has, but he does not fully know that Jesus is the Messiah. But what does Jesus do in this situation? Jesus guides him to the truth that he is the son of God. We might come across so many people like this. You know, I have a lot of uh, acquaintances in this category where they have experienced some miracles. Uh, they know that, you know, the teachings of uh, Christ are uh, very applicable to everyday life. And, you know, these principles really make a difference. They're in that category, but they are not believers of Christ. They don't think that he is the Messiah yet. So those who are in that category, like this blind man, to some extent, there is faith in his heart. What does Jesus say? So Jesus introduces him to the complete truth of God's word. He asks him the right question for his salvation. What is that? Faith in Christ, isn't it? So he asks him, do you believe in the Son of God? And Again, the blind man, something we are noticing about him is honest. He's so honest. He says, look, uh, who is he? If I knew, you know, that I would, I would surely believe in him. Then Jesus replies to him and he says, you have both seen him and it is he who is talking with you. So Jesus tells him, in other words, he says, I am the Messiah. And the moment Jesus told him that he is the Messiah, uh, what happens? The blind man responds and he says, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. So you know, those uh, uh, among us who may not know about salvation, you know, we can lead them. We can lead them. We can, um, the way Jesus asked the right question about him being the Christ, we can share God's word with uh, such friends of us. And then they make their own decision, obviously. This man was not forced in any way, but he responds. He had already experienced the miracle of God in his life. So he says, Lord, I believe. Meaning, you know, I, uh, I want to be saved. I give my life to you. I want to follow you. And then, you know, what happens is he worships Jesus. Whom do we worship? We only worship God. We do not worship man but what happened to this blind man he has come to the knowledge that jesus is the messiah and 
the moment we encounter god you know anyone who encounters god the natural response is worship because that's how we have been created when we encounter god we cannot do anything else but worship because his presence is so awesome you know um that that uh, uh just that dynamics that god has created right uh, we we can't bypass that the moment you recognize wow this is god's presence something within you says what a wonderful god what a mighty god what is that worship worship begins to come out of us and we begin to adore this wonderful god so same thing the moment he recognized i'm speaking to god when jesus is the messiah he says lord he changes the way uh um you know he was talking to jesus till now so it becomes what his approach becomes one of worship towards jesus so then jesus says um for judgment i have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind so based on whatever happened till now in this passage we have seen the blind man he got healed the blind person could see who was you know physically blind um and god opened his physical eyes but with the question where he told him that he is the messiah or oh, sorry with the question that led to the blind man to believe that he is the messiah his spiritual eyes were also opened okay so jesus is kind of pointing to that and he say those who could not see like this blind man both naturally and spiritually they are able to see but those who claim to see who are they the jews the pharisees the scribes right obviously um, they they are all the jews but i'm just using uh, different terms pharisees scribes or the religious people the religious people and these religious people they are also the learned people they know the scriptures so in that sense we are calling them as a category of people who can see or who have understanding about the things of god but how unfortunate though you can see you're not able to see the depth of what god is revealing so they are seeing the scriptures but the scriptures are pointing to jesus and that they are not able to see and that's what jesus is saying right now and those who see may be blind made blind is it that god wanted the uh, uh, leaders spiritual leaders to be blind no see it's not free will is something that uh, god has created even in the garden of eden if there was no free will then god could have controlled the choices adam you can't eat the fruit eve okay stop it make the fruit drop from her hand god could have done that but because free will is very much a part of god's creation god's creation i'm saying god's creation because not just mankind think about lucifer you know he said i will become greater than god i will ascend you know so he makes a decision to do whatever he wants to do does god come against free will he doesn't he lets people make their choices so these religious people the fact that they were blind to the truth that jesus is the messiah it was their own choice though the language here seems to tell us that as if god jesus says that those who see may be made blind made does not mean that god is making them blind but they have chosen to be blind okay so we have to understand it in context god doesn't make people's heart hard each one of us we are responsible for our hard hearts even pharaoh sometimes people use the example of pharaoh uh, and say how god hardened his heart yes he had a hard heart but we have to look at it in the context of how god has always been working he never forces anybody um, with regard to their decisions that is why salvation is a choice if god wanted in a moment 
he can force everyone to accept Christ as Messiah. Why are we going through this passage where the uh, people are arguing and some are saying, no, he's a sinful man? Because they're struggling with their choice. And God is allowing them to take their time to make their journey with regard to their choice. So free will exists and God never overrides the will of man. So even though here it says that uh, those who see may be made blind, we have to understand it in the right way. It's not that God is forcing them not to believe. Then let's uh, carry forward, carry uh, ahead. Some of the Pharisees okay, who were with him heard all these things and they said to him, are we blind also? Because they came to know what Jesus is trying to say. Okay, Then Jesus says, he says, look, if you were blind, now already he made a statement that those who see, they are blind. Meaning, not accepting. Though the reality is, in front of them. Now he brings in another understanding. Let us see what that is. So the Pharisees ask him, are we blind? So he tells them, look, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remains. Okay, this also is really uh, something for us to grasp. When we know, you know, scriptures say, if you if you can do good, you do it. Like if you know what you need to do, you do it. If you don't do it, if you withhold, then uh, that is sin. Okay. So in the same way, uh, when the Pharisees knew what the scriptures have to say, and on top of that, Jesus has been explaining himself so clearly to them time and again. Now what Jesus is saying, suppose, they did not have knowledge of what is right and they chose wrong. That is a different matter because they don't have understanding. They are ignorant. But in the case of the Pharisees, they know. So that is why Jesus is saying, you're the ones who are claiming we see or you know a lot of things and yet you're not doing it. And that is why Sin remains in you or you have sinned. Knowing what is right, you're not willing to accept. That makes things more complicated. So he's warning them. In other terms, he's warning them and he's telling them, you have to be very, uh, uh, you know, sort of, you should wake up because knowingly you're going against God. That is a very serious matter. So he is awakening them. He is warning them that these people are headed towards danger. So let's carry on from here in this whole passage. Uh, John 9 is the passage where we have um, seen a blind man healed. Uh, from, he, from birth, uh, he was blind. He is healed. And the different things that take place after he is healed. So now we will continue to chapter 10. Okay, this again, it's a beautiful passage. The way Jesus was making a case for himself in um, uh, John chapter 8, you know, where he claimed, I'm the light uh, and uh, before Abraham was, I am. In John chapter 10, we have uh, Jesus, Jesus' claims about himself. You know, another time. So let's see. So in the background of whatever has happened regard to, with regard to the blind man, um, Jesus kind of begins to make it even more clear who he is. So he, he tells the people, he says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the, sh by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So he's trying to make an analogy here about the caretaking of sheep. So when you look at sheep, they are uh, very simple creatures. They uh, are usually seen as you know, gullible. Gullible means uh, too innocent 
any any creature can lead them away and you know maybe attack them and uh, kill them so they need a shepherd to protect them they need a shepherd to guide them they need a shepherd to show them you know where where uh, uh, green pastures are and basically they need a shepherd to take care of them so using this analogy jesus is talking about god and about those who believe the gods the people who believe in god and you know he he starts painting this picture he says like when there is this uh, sheep pen where the sheep are kept the owner or the main the the shepherd there's no need for the shepherd to jump over the wall and enter that pen he can directly enter through the door the only person who jumps into any uh, compound is a robber or a thief but the shepherd of the sheep enters through the door that is understandable why uh, because he owns the place and he does not have to hide so he enters through the door to him the door keeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out so he say that for the shepherd the door will be open he says the door keeper opens um uh, and you know some people have said that the door keeper here refers to the holy spirit okay uh, but yeah we we understand you know what he is trying to get at basically the entrance uh, or uh, the bold entry that the shepherd can have the thief or the robber cannot have and another another thing that we see here is the relationship that the shepherd has with the sheep the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out uh, i don't know if uh, you have seen a video about uh, a shepherd calling out to the sheep uh, in that video i'll see if i can find it during the break now um, what happens is the the shepherd right just his voice different people use the same command to call the sheep but the sheep doesn't respond but the moment the shepherd speaks you know the sheep come rushing into the pen they follow the command of the shepherd so that shows us a relationship without relationship how can the sheep know the shepherd's voice so what jesus was trying to say is he's trying to say that those who believe in god those who trust in god okay we know god's voice when god is speaking to us now the pharisees they are claiming that they know god they are claiming that they can see they are claiming that you know all scripture is theirs but when god jesus jesus is speaking they are not able to relate they are not able to hear god's voice in that sense okay so that that is what jesus is coming at so he's saying the sheep hear the voice and he calls his own sheep by name and le- he leads them out so there is that personal relationship between the shepherd and the sheep the sheep can hear his voice and the shepherd is so caring that he individually takes care of every uh, believer by name so god doesn't uh, say that i'm so busy taking care of the world i don't know who are you i don't know it's not like that but you know he knows every person individually uh, he know he knows his own sheep by name and he leads them out so a personal relationship uh, is is maintained with god and he says when he brings out his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice so same thing strong close relationship between god and his people and god leads the people the people recognize when god is speaking and now he says these sheep or god's people they will not follow the voice of anyone else or the term stranger is used here they will run away if a stranger t- tries to instruct them so basically god is 
try, uh, Jesus was trying to say that by now, Pharisees, you should have heard the voice of God, but you're not able to hear God's voice. And you're pretending as if, um, you know, uh, it's a stranger who is speaking to you. But the true sheep, they would have understood by now that this voice, which is, uh, which is revealing the Messiah to them, is the true voice of God. And they would believe. Okay, And the sheep will not believe any other person. So that is the context in which you know Jesus uh, tries to uh, introduce himself. We'll see later that you know he is the good shepherd. So at this point, I think we will pause. Any thoughts? Any questions? Anything that you want to add to what we have been saying so far? The blind man we've seen, right? So anything with regard to that? Okay, just hold on. Let me try to uh, share that video. I don't know if there'll be uh, audio available on, on my thing, but let's see. Just Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Please let me know whether you can hear the audio. Can you hear? Can you hear everyone? Oh, you can't hear. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I can. Uh, I can just tell you that uh, I think what they are trying to do is they are trying to have different people call the sheep. So just observe that. I think that will give you an idea. I'll start it again. Couldn't hear the sound. I think you got the concept, right? Uh, the people who called earlier was. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the people who called earlier were others, but when the farmer called, the sheep actually came. Um, uh, so, Dave, I, am, I don't get that option. I don't know why. 
so that's the reason i i wasn't able to share my audio what i'll do is i'll share this link with all of you maybe in your break you can just quickly have a look at it okay all right let's go for a break class we'll come back and we will uh, continue with the rest thank you <laughs> 